if you've ever wanted to control Logic Pro with uh, an Android device because you don't have an iPhone or any other iDevice like an iPad or an iPod Touch, well, today's your lucky day because I'm going to show you how you can control Logic Pro and pretty much any other DAW using a very convenient app that you can download both for Android and iOS. So I actually prefer this method over the Logic Remote app because it actually has more flexibility in the long run. So you can actually customize this app to your uh, liking. So it's, uh, it's, it's much better and it's just a little bit more difficult to set up at the beginning. But once you've got it down, you're going to see that it's not that difficult and the cool thing about this app is that it has a free version that you can use to try this. Uh, you can try this system out on. So in case, just in case it doesn't work, you don't have to waste your money. But the app is only six dollars, five ninety nine, if I'm not mistaken. So you're really not losing much. It costs about as much, or maybe even less than a TV remote. So there you go. So I'm going to show you guys the app just to get started. So. I'm just going to bring up the brightness on my phone so you can see. So ba basically, this is what the uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is what the main menu looks like. And if you want better screenshots, I'll leave a link to uh, a tutorial I made on decibelpeak.com. If you prefer just having like a text version that you can just print out or just, you know, read through step by step. Um, so this video is just going to be to clarify certain things and just to show you visually what the setup looks like. Uh, I'm actually doing it for the first time on this computer since I just upgraded to uh, the Mac Mini M1. So you guys are going to see like literally as if you had never done this before. So I think that's going to be beneficial. So the first thing you're going to want to do and the free version is going to look slightly different, but it's going to be pretty much the same. So you should have like a setup. You just click uh, at the top left of the screen, you'll have like a menu and you click on setup. And um, the first thing you want to do is there's going to be an option called dock controller. It might have changed. So where you see sequencer, which should be the first the first option. Click on that. And if I'm not mistaken, by default, it is set to Cubase. So you just want to set that to logic or whatever DA you're using. Um, so basically you have your list right over here of which DAWs are going to be compatible. I mean, there are some that aren't on the list. Like for example, you don't have GarageBand and that's because GarageBand doesn't really support um, many external MIDI controllers. Like of course, if you're plugging a keyboard, but there are certain things like, for example, an application like this that will not be supported by GarageBand. Uh, Cubase LE is another one that doesn't really support any of this stuff. So, you know, it, it does, it's not the app that has the limitations. It's the DAW that you're using that might have limitations. But if you're using any major DAW, like, you know, Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, this app is compatible. So just make sure you select the right DAW because it does make a difference. So that, that pretty much covers the setup in regards to the app. So I'm just going to leave this on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is if you're using a VPN, which I am, you're going to just want to disable that because we're actually going to be connecting the, basically your, your touch dot app and your phone is going to be like a, a media device, which is going to be broadcasting over Wi-Fi. And it needs to be both devices, your computer and the phone need to be connected to the same um, Wi-Fi network for this to function properly. So a VPN will change the IP address. So that's why it will not work if you're using a VPN. So once uh, that's done and you shouldn't have any difficulties, even if you have a firewall, it's, you know, like I have the basic um, Mac firewall enabled and it's never caused me any issues. So it's just really the VPN. But the next thing you want to do is you want to go into your audio MIDI setup. This is like an application that's included with Mac. I'm sure you could find it in your, uh, uh, what is this thing called again? The launch pad. 
uh, I just made myself a shortcut, then you might want to do the same because you're most likely going to be opening and closing this thing uh, multiple times. Every time you want to, you know, have this setup going, every time you disconnect, you might have to like reconfigure some things. Not the end of the world. I'll show you how simple it is. So you want to go once this is opened up, you want to go into window. Uh, you want to go and show MIDI Studio. Okay. And then in MIDI Studio, you click this one and open MIDI Network Setup. There you go. So that's what you got to do. Okay. So now when you have my sessions, you're going to want to create two new sessions. And as you can see, actually, it's this, this is actually the uh, input and the output of the, tot, the TouchDot app, which is already broadcasting on the Wi-Fi network. So already in my case, we know that this is working. But what we have to do is create our actual. There we go. So um, what I usually end up naming these is just TouchDot. There you go. You want to make sure it's enabled. And uh, we're going to create a second one. So basically what we're doing is we're creating the input and the output. So the input, um, you know, from your the perspective of your um, of your device, your phone is basically like your MIDI controller. Like when you click a, a button or a note, it's basically broadcasting information to your DAW. And you also want the output for it. For example, like if you have like a. Um, you know, the time code from your DAW that's going to be outputted from your DAW computer into the application on your phone so they can be synchronized. So you that's why we have like an input and an output in this case. So you could honestly name these uh, whatever you want. Uh, we'll just go with that for now. And you always want to make sure that they are enabled. OK, so there you go. Now you have like this thing that popped up. This is basically like now like my uh, computer is broadcasting into the network as well. So now what we want to do is we want to assign each one of these inputs to their respective um, session as they're called over here. RTP one, okay, is going to go to to the DAW, okay, and then RTP two is going to go to the out. So if I've done everything correctly, this um, should be working right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just honestly, like I would just recommend leaving this open, but for just, you know, to make some room right now, you can close it up. If ever you guys need to open it up again, just remember it. First, you go in a window, show MIDI Studio, MIDI Studio, and you have Open MIDI Network set up. So it's not that difficult close that up, but definitely leave this open. It stays open by default. So just don't right click and close it, leave it open. So we're going to just test this out in logic. And I'm just going to do like a basic test. We're going to click the play button on the app. So uh, as you can see, we got like the transport. So I'm just going to click play and record. I want to see if those two functions work. I'm going to open a new empty project. And in the, um, if I remember correctly, and um, there you go. This actually opened up by default. Logic control, that's what it's called. So that's pretty interesting, but it should be enabled. So if something doesn't work, it's perfect. We're going to troubleshoot it live on the spot. And uh, that way you guys get some pretty good insight into what you need to do to make this work. So basically, um, According to my knowledge, everything should be working. And as I said, that a demo version uh, does not have the ability to press record. And another thing that the demo version does not do is it does not automatically assign um, each individual, like basically note, because each uh, parameter on the touch dot, the touch dot app is equivalent to like you pressing a key on a MIDI controller. So you're going to have to manually assign them. I wouldn't bother with this. I would just do one of them, like the play button, for example. And I'm not going to have to do this since I already bought the, the pro version or the full version. But the quickest and easiest way to do that is to just click play. And you're going to go over here in logic, control surfaces, and you're going to do learn assignment for play. 
and then your play button will be assigned to the play button and touched off and um, you click play if it works perfect that's your test you can go ahead and purchase the full version and everything else will be automatically assigned so you won't have to go through this ever again it's just for testing purposes but since i have the full version i'm going to go ahead right now and press play and see if it works there you go so i, I mean i guess you guys didn't see that because um so basically look so every time i press play it's it's starting from zero and now I just basically want to see if it is, and I can even solo the track, unsolo, commute the track. Uh, I'm actually not in the right view. There's a lot of views. I'm more of a transport. There we go. There's a lot of different views and a lot of different functionality you have in Touch Doll. Like it's actually kind of amazing. You even have like an XY pad. You have like a drum, you know, drum pads. You have like like this is basically like a a fully fledged MIDI controller uh, broadcasting over Wi-Fi. So you have a lot of different functionality and it's actually, in my opinion, that's why it's because that, <laughs> that's why it's better than uh, Logic Remote. So definitely recommend this app over Logic Remote, regardless of what you use, it even works on iOS. So now we're just gonna try the record. And as you can see, it's recording and I'm not doing this on my keyboard, um, you know, I could be like basically, you know, to make to, to prove just to prove the point. And uh, there's even like you can assign like different functions. Like if you want to undo that, like there's like function buttons. So you like you can basically do anything you want with this app. So it's really versatile. But just to prove my point, I'm going to go all the way down there and press play and record just in case you don't believe that <laughs> this is possible. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, I didn't have any difficulties doing this. You shouldn't have any difficulties either. So it's just a matter of like testing if this works or not. And if you're using relatively the same setup as I am, you should have no difficulties. But if you're using different DAWs or um, maybe you're using Windows, I can only give you limited support since I don't have experience with uh, with well, it's not that I don't have experience. I've definitely used Windows and used other DAWs before, but I don't have like the current knowledge and I've never tried this with uh, those different platforms. So you can go ahead and leave me a comment either way if uh, you, you want a little bit more help or assistance setting this up, but I will only be able to give you maximum support if you're using Logic Pro and Mac OS. Uh, this is actually on the latest. Uh, this is on uh, Mac OS Big Sur, so there's no excuse. It works. It should work on every other previous version of Mac OS. But if ever you have an issue, like I said, just leave me a comment. So if you enjoyed today's video, just make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.